Hey guys, welcome to Omni Athlete. We've got a great show for you today. We're here with Scott Botorf and uh, we're gonna be covering some really interesting topics including fascia, the impact of emotional trauma on our bodies and the importance of recovery for athletes in performance. So let's get started. Scott, I think the, the first place for us to start is just mm. if if somebody is walking into this interview as an athlete or a coach and doesn't have any idea what fascia is and why they should care about it, let's let's start there. Let's really dive from there. Okay. Well, fascia is the structure of you. It's basically what gives our physical body shape. It's like the architecture. And so you want to think of like this connective kind of tissue body suit or straight jacket, depending on how you're, uh, you're working with it or how not. How you're programmed. <laughs> exactly. And this creates um, the shape of our body in this physical realm. It's, it's quite wonderful. Uh, without it, though, we'd be like a pile of goo, okay. like sliding on the floor. So you can see how it's very important for our structural integrity. But it's, it's not just structure, though. This, this fascia covers our muscles, it, it, it compartmentalizes our organs, it, it basically holds, it has a placeholder for everything in our body. And so, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing stuff. We were talking a little bit off camera just mm. about the, the connection between fascia and emotions. So mm -hmm. let's, uh, uh, without derailing us too much from the get-go, let's start with um, emotions, how they get interwoven into fascia, right? How we process those and, and why as an athlete that can affect performance. That's actually a pretty good question we're leading <laughs> off with. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so let's just think about an athlete in the, in the earlier years, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, something might happen to them, like they, maybe they have a fall or maybe it's like they take their first hit or maybe it's just uh, conditioning of the parents or, or whatever it might be. Um, our fascia, well, it has great force. It can tense with great force. So if it's emotional trauma, psychological, physical, or energetic, um, we'll call that just like life trauma. Um, our, the, the body or the fascia has a great potential to tense with great force to protect us whenever our body's perceiving an event that's life or death sure. or survival. Which happens as an athlete when you're playing, right? Oh yeah, it yeah. happens all the time. Yeah. Like every second, the body's up in that, that uh, sympathetic state, you know, fight or flight. Um, and so the thing is that, so say like, um, you know, an athlete had a, say they had a hit, you know, when they were like four or five years old, maybe they started playing football or hockey sure. or whatever. You know, that fascia will tense with great force so the body survives. Uh, the thing is though, that that force is what gets stored in the body. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, after the injury happens, we have to release the fascia and almost unwind it. And if we don't, this is what's really scary for athletes is, I don't think most athletes know this, yeah. is that we can be defined by our past uh, traumas, uh, you know, ma no matter what it is on the realm, and then that's how we function you know, every day. So we are, I, I have a the story I'll share, just, mm -hmm. just to give this context. So freshman year at CU, mm -hmm. I'm walking around to the football team and I, we're doing 40s, pull my hamstring, doing 40s, right? Absolutely crushed. And since that point, I've, you know, I've struggled consistently to run at a full speed or at least be able to go full tilt with my hamstring. What it sounds like you're saying, and the way I connected this thought as we we're talking about it is, that trauma that occurred there, right, that acute injury, even if I'm healed, even if I feel good, and I'll have moments where I can run and I feel great, if it's not really unwound, it's still there. So every time I try to run, I try to move, I'm asking my body to process an emotional and physical injury that happened seven years ago, eight years ago, even though here I am today and I don't, that injury has no bearing on what I'm doing right now. That's pretty true. <laughs> um, That's nuts, right? I mean, it's crazy. It is, and this is where athletes get into issues, you know, where it could be their performance goes down or they feel like they're in a slump um, it has to do uh, with the physical foundation. Hmm. And so if we can open up the fascia, we can start unwinding that tension that was built. Like the fascia makes these little caves mm -hmm. uh, of scar tissue. 
And then that protects us, but in that scar tissue, like say a little cave and it kind of winds it up, uh, it almost like think of the fascia as like a towel. Yeah. And you kind of keep winding That's the towel seen, and yeah. keep winding it, then making a knot, winding it, winding it. Well, in those knots and those adhesions, you, these little caves, right? I like to call them caves. And, yeah. and uh, inside there's cellular data of that event. Could it be like whatever, the emotional, uh, physical, whatever it might be. Sure. So with you, it was like a, a physical thing yeah. happened. And so that gets stored, right? You know, and the, the emotions you felt at that point in time. But the fascia helps save you so then you don't break your leg sure. or, or snap your ankle. But then the tissue still has whatever, you know, hundreds to thousands of pounds of force. <laughs> and it's, that's, it's gonna, and that this fascia, you know, the straight jacket or this, this body of tissue has a direct connection to our, our nervous system, <laughs> our spinal cord and brain. So if it keeps tensing with all that force, it's gonna keep telling the spinal cord and brain that, oh, we're in the, we're pulling our hamstring again yeah. and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of wild. It's crazy. Yeah. What, uh, so as you say that, what comes to mind is, you know, we've, we've had guests recently that have spent a lot of time talking mm -hmm. about language, right? And the mm -hmm. power of language mm -hmm. for trauma and athletes. Where do we, where does, where does the language that we use get pulled into that conversation, right? I mean, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're talking about physical manifestations in the body, but so much of what we're learning is that that comes from the language we use too. Oh yeah. It's, um, well, let's put it this way. The, the body and especially the fascia is the uh, unconscious mind. Um, most people want to try and intellectualize or idealize or analyze how they should move. However, our nervous system has all, is so intricate and it will, move, it will move everything. It's like the old school operator has like, it will connect all the cords the way you need it so you can move. And so what, what's really, this is just our whole culture, not just obviously athletics, but our whole culture, everyone is in fight or flight. Mm. We are, we're a country of, we gotta make more money, oh, we're stressed out, we have all this like uh, technology, yeah. all these uh, wavelengths that, that even make our fascia tense even more. Mm. And so no one, barely anyone's in the parasympathetic or calm uh, state. Yeah. And so it's super important, not just for like athletes, but just for anyone for overall health, because like we're just wasting life whenever that fascia is like tensing with great force, because it's gonna keep telling our nervous system that we're in that fight or flight situation. And so this is like, this is a conversation we need to have with everyone. It's like, if you can't relax the nervous system or calm it with getting the fascia to unwind and, and open, then it, we're always going to be defined by our past. We're living in the past, like our bodies. Like physically. Physically, yeah. yes. So it's, it's sort of wild. I don't think a lot of people are, are aware of that. How, not even how, why isn't recovery a bigger part of the just athletic arena, right? We spend, mm -hmm. you know, geez, trillions practically mm -hmm. on, on performance enhancement, mm -hmm. whether it's technology, training, you know, environment, whatever the case may be. And we're spending a fraction of that just as an, as an industry in sports, but especially for coaches and athletes in a time calculation. If we spend eight hours training in a day, right? 10 hours training in a day, mm -hmm. we you know, typically are gonna spend maybe an hour in recovery, maybe, maybe. So, so why, why is that discrepancy there? Why don't we see the value in recovery? Um, well, to tell you the truth, uh, the Western approach and understanding of the body is lacking. Hmm. Um, you know, I was in school for PT to begin with, did all the prerequisites, all the anatomy classes. They talk nothing. They taught me nothing about the deep fascia or how the tendon functions with hmm. it. And this is supposed to be, you know, it's like a four or five, six year program, nothing of the sorts. Hmm. However, in Chinese medicine and in all the Eastern cultures, fascia has been apparent for six to 7,000 years. I mean, that's a long time. That's crazy. Tried and true. Yeah. But they, like, uh, I'm just gonna go to this a little bit. Tai Chi, just it's very old style of martial art. So it's not just a martial art, it's also a, a way to open up the fascia and heal the body. Um, through movement. Through movement, yeah. And so they, they've known this for so many years. Even uh, Leonardo da Vinci mm -hmm. used to cut open all the bodies and he used to study the fascia. He probably knew more about that than anyone now today. You know, even the greatest doctor you know, in the United States, he probably knew a lot more. Mm -hmm. 
And so it was crazy. So it's like, it gets really dismissed in Western uh, culture, but in Eastern culture, it's pivotal. It's like, you know, if you don't change that, well, then your health doesn't change. And so that's why the those pe people um, age more gracefully because we're only as old as our organs are, okay? <laughs> but if the fascia like, t like torques with all that force, like that big towel, and it squeezes everything, it's gonna squeeze like the blood vessels, the arteries, the capillaries, and that causes a lack of blood flow, <laughs> not just the muscles, to the organs. And so then if those aren't getting energy and blood flow, well guess what? The organs aren't gonna work well. It doesn't matter how much you train that athlete. If he has scar tissue in his chest, his VO2 max and his endurance will not go up. I don't care what, like periodization training or whatever you do with this guy, if you don't change that tissue, that organ will not work. So. Where do we start as athletes or coaches? If I'm, let, me, mm -hmm. let me ask you even more specifically. Mm -hmm. If I'm a coach, right, and I say, okay, I want to just start wor working on deep fascia, and I mm -hmm. want to start understanding how to get my athletes to shed some of this trauma that they're processing. Mm -hmm. Where do we start? Where do, where do we go? Okay, well, this is a good question. Um, a lot of, like I, we spoke a little bit before, the fascia, there's superficial fascia, and uh, a lot of people have felt this. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you foam roll, people use foam rollers, and that's great. You get to feel superficial fascia, a little bit of release. Get a massage. Uh, mm -hmm. Most massages uh, only open up the superficial layer. Just think of like the mm -hmm. outer layer. Okay. Um, but then there's a deeper layer that's connected right to the tendon, mm -hmm. which connects uh, to the joint. It's like connects, you know, the muscle, each, each compartment of muscles, okay? But the thing is that um, everyone's doing what? Dynamic flexibility, static flexibility, PRP, active release, uh, whatever, uh, all these different, um, you know, acupressure points, active release, it's all, it's great. And then they're all, it's really funny, they're all going after fascia, but they don't know this. <laughs> and so when I work with an athlete, I ask them, well, like, what are you feeling? And then, a lot of times, most athletes and people in general don't even feel their fascia because it's so tight, right? Mm -hmm. And when it's so tight from whatever past uh, uh, trauma or whatever, it could have just be an event, it doesn't have to be trauma, uh, it numbs the body. And so a lot of people don't even feel their bodies as much uh, you know, as, as what they're really thinking. You know? So athletes are yeah. running, let's say, you know, yeah. say I'm a high school, college professional, and I'm playing, I may be turned up to nine or 10, right? When I'm right. playing and I'm at, at my peak, I'm mm -hmm. essentially what you're saying is I'm almost, I'm operating as if there's a saber tooth tiger chasing me, right? My body feels that way, it's responding right. that way. Mm -hmm. But when I come out of the game, I may be only dropping down to, to eight or nine, mm -hmm. right? But I don't know it. So I'm walking around as if that's still happening to me and trying to figure out why the world feels so discombobulated to me or mm -hmm. so, or why my tension is at such a high level, right? right. So that's the, the word is tension, mm. the tensile force. Let's talk about this since you brought this up. Yeah. <laughs> this will feed into everything. So uh, the tensile force of the fascia, of what we know of, I think it's a lot more force. Um, they, they did some studies uh, and one of them was to, they figured out 2,000 pounds per square inch of tensile force. That's a lot. And that's, that's why insane. you hear these people that are in like car accidents, like crazy car accidents and they live somehow, it's because the fascia can really tense with great force to hold us together. So like a super suit. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a super suit. Yeah. It, it's, it does incredible things. Um, so what, what comes to mind as you're, as you're saying that is I have this vision of like Iron Man, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got this vision of, okay, if, if I'm a person, if I'm an athlete, when I step into that mode of performance, I, you kind of have this innate feeling of I'm turning into a different being. Right, it's so like when we, we talk a lot about the idea of being in the zone, right, being in flow. Mm. And those feelings come with it, truly this feeling of being out of your body. And what it feels like you're kind of saying too is that not only are you gonna maybe have that conscious experience where you're really disconnected from what's happening in your body, but your body is like putting, in, putting on a suit that's ready for battle, right? Like you're, you're literally Iron Man in that moment. Mm. Suit comes on and now I'm performing. Yeah, it's like our armor. Yeah, um, wow. However, uh, if we can't deactivate the armor, then we're always, we're always in battle. And this is where uh, people, like there's this fascination with warriors, which is great. I love warriors, uh, gladiators, everything. But we're not supposed to be fighting all the time. Hmm. 
You know, there, there's a time to rest and then there's a time to <laughs> compete. Um, but uh, in this day and age, there really is, uh, there's no contrast. And so this, and so like you asked me, how can we get athletes to become more yeah. aware? And this is the first thing I'll do is, um, this is super simple, but we'll address the joints, okay? Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know about joint awareness. And the reason I'm saying this is that that deep fascia, that, 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 and there's different layers of it, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, that connects at that tendon. So the tendon and the deep fascia are like brothers, okay. and they're connected. So, but how many athletes are you seeing out there that are unwinding their tendons? <laughs> maybe one percentile yeah. and they're probably the best in their sport because they're not telling anyone else what that is. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so there's different, these joint mobility drills and it has to do with the tendon. It's a very odd feeling. Like everyone, they feel the tendon is like, this is very weird. Mm-hmm. And then they, and it starts to create room in the joints. It, and it, it's, it's crazy. Cause like most people understand that the joints are supposed to be open and there's supposed to be room and they're supposed to be like, uh, you know, like this, this unwound, like the tendon should be unwound, not screw drived in. So, cause if you, the tendon gets, the uh, tendon and fascia are spiral like DNA. And so they, they get torqued almost like a drill bit into, mm. you know, into the, the, the bone and also the joint. And so then the, it drives the bone into the sockets. Okay. So everything, it's really just like, just torqued. And so it's most athletes or people in general don't even know what an open joint feels like because we're always tensing. I was, yeah. what, what came to mind there is that sounds so foreign to most mm-hmm. athletes. Do you think, whether on purpose or not, athletes end up, and just people in general, resisting the feeling of unwinding it because they just don't know any different? Oh, that's, that's actually perfect. Um, <laughs> I was talking to a runner the other day and he, he, he had injured himself, he broke his foot but he was so scared to change the tissue in his foot because he was so used to the way he was running. But the thing is that, um, here's the scary part. Uh, by no means uh, is he running with muscle at this point in time. Cause like the, that fascia tense with great force, right? And helped him so he didn't you know, break any more things in his body. And so he could survive. But the thing is that now he, the, he, it, it, it like has a stranglehold on the muscles and the muscles can't fold in and out or shorten and lengthen. And so now every time he runs, he's just gonna build more tension in the fascia and it's gonna make more knots and more adhesions and keep twisting. And he'll use the torque in his fascia to, to, to achieve his running. <laughs> Until one day he blows his knee out or his hip or his back. Because then think of this. Um, Western chiropractic thinks that bones move muscles. That's totally incorrect. <laughs> this is why a lot of people, I actually, you know, I had a bad experience with it where I had nerve damage. You know, being a hockey player, you know, my muscles got super tight from being asymmetrical, mm-hmm. like shooting one side. Sure. Yes, why do, we, why do we teach athletes only one side? Mm-hmm. You might as well just like, you know, take them in a room and traumatize them because now you've, now only one side gets super tight and then the other side gets, like one side gets developed, one doesn't. And so like we need to be teaching this like symmetrical type of, uh, you know, training. Does symmetry build yeah. opportunity for greater performance? Oh yeah. Um, so the, this is lead us into the different planes of fascia. So there's like a frontal plane that, that starts at the bottom of the foot and goes all the way up the front of the body and attaches the eyebrow. There's a rear plane, starts at the bottom of the foot also and goes all the way up the back of the body and then wraps around the skull of the eyebrow. And then there's this other one, this is this one. There's so many, okay. but we'll, I'm just talking about a few. There's another one called the spiral plane, which is it makes an X on the front side and an X on the back side. And it connects left to right and right to left. Okay. So this is actually super important. This is actually what encapsulates our nervous system. Hmm. So we don't like, when we walk, like one arm goes forward, one arm goes back. One leg goes forward, one leg goes back. That's our nervous system, right? Hmm. Um, but what, what is the placeholder for that nervous system connection is that X factor of that spiral fascia. Hmm. And I, I was training at all these performance facilities uh, for hockey and, and so on, and, and they always talked about the X factor. And I'm like, what the hell is the X factor? (laughs) 
And everyone's like, well, this is like, if you get this, you know, you're going to be the fastest athlete. You're going to, you're going to kill the combine. You're going to do the, mo the, the most pull-ups, the most bench press. You're going to be the fastest in the sprint, mm -hmm. everything. But no one could tell me what the X factor was. It was like this mystery. Interesting. And I'm like, these are pretty top facilities for hockey, baseball. Like these are like where all the, you know, any up and coming athletes going to go. They want to go college, professional. This is where they're going to be at. But all these tag words, but no one understood that it was actually fascia mm -hmm. is the X factor, the spiral fascia. So you open that up. Now you open up the left to right, right to left. Now we have uh, we have movement. You know, balanced movement. What what it sounds like you're you're kind of uh, talking about too is just the notion that we we tend to, and maybe this is a Western uh, belief, but but sport tends to think so much about the the physical strength that we develop, right? Mm -hmm. We had we had Riley Cote on the other week, mm -hmm. and and you know one of the things he mentioned is he feels like he ended up spending so much time trying to get his muscle strong, right? Trying to mm -hmm. build this this physical strength and sacrifice the fluidity and flexibility and and true symmetry that allows for heightened athletic performance. Is that mm -hmm. kind of what it sounds like you're talking about too? Oh yeah, this is oh man. Yeah, strength training can either help you or destroy you. I mean, golf I, I here's just a great example. Golfers. Like so I've seen a lot of professional, I work with a lot of professional golfers, and when they start lifting heavy, their movement patterns are really start to suck. Mm. And so the thing is, this is because uh, uh, what we talked about, that deep fascia and the tendon and that joint attachment, there has to be awareness of that. Mm. So whenever you're training, okay, we, we, we've talked about, uh, I know trainers and performance specialists know about the uh, uh, antagonists and agonists, you know, as far as like the, the muscles, you know, one folds in, one folds out. Mm -hmm. um, the fascia is just like that, mm -hmm. you know, and if we can't access the fascia, then, well, the muscles don't work. Like um, people understand this, and so they think that, you know, when they lift a weight and it springs up really fast, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, when they move really fast, sure. everything's springy. Like the fascia is more spring loaded. It's yeah. not like it's not how it doesn't always all the like uh, intricate contractile units, almost like fingers, like mm -hmm. the muscles where they want to reach each other. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like a towel, and so like the towel has like torque, and it's like a spring, mm -hmm. and it and it can fold in and out. And the thing is that a lot of people don't understand that like when they're training, and and I see this in like gyms, performance facilities everywhere, even Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like no pain, no gain. It's like we're yeah. back in the 1980s yeah. Yeah. and we're using willpower to yeah. lift. Yeah. Okay, so when we start using willpower, well then now we're out of body, okay? And so What then, do you mean by out of body? Out of body meaning that I'm gonna use my emotion and to have the will to win, to be like, I'm gonna do this no matter what. And it's like conjure emotion, <laughs> excitement, passion, whatever that might be, will. And I will lift that weight. Yeah. But I'll use that excitement to move the weight, but then not be able to feel my body doing that. And then this is where the, the fascia will be like, oh, don't worry, I got, I got your back on this mm -hmm. one. And it'll tense with great force. Say mm -hmm. the guy wants to put up like a big bench press. Sure. He starts screaming, yelling, you know, like doing this stuff, smacking himself. Yeah. And he just throws up the bench press, you know, and, the, and then after he feels great, but then it's like, you know, did he feel his muscles? Like what was going on? Was there contraction or was it just all spring in the fascia? So there could yeah. be total disconnect yes. between the mind and body when somebody's lifting. And almost yeah. in some ways, the way the culture, especially the culture of team athletics too, mm. it almost feels like at times we create a dis disconnect between the mind and the body. We do, um, just because of the lack of understanding um, and uh, I'll, we'll tail this into the Chinese stuff because I'm going to slowly get into that because uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with Chinese medicine, um, something I've been working with quite a bit. And so the thing is that to have awareness of this is the huge thing here for athletes. And I guarantee you most athletes don't have awareness of if they're moving with their, their, their fascia and scar tissue or moving with their muscle. Hmm. And uh, this, it's really incredible. How do you know the difference? Or, or can you? What, oh, what, is yeah. the, what is the mechanism? So there? I can work with, uh, I, uh, my work's a lot of manual work at first, because like, I have to introduce the, the athlete to their body again. And so what I'll do is like, so yeah, I know. Say, say that again. You have to introduce. <laughs> yes, I know. I literally have to introduce the athlete to their body again. So guys, if you're listening, yeah. this is the moment where you lean in. What, what Scott is saying mm -hmm. in that moment is you can be an elite athlete and be totally disconnected mm -hmm. from your body. Yeah, I've, 
you know, lots I've, I've worked with, you know, some Olympic athletes and professional, but especially Olympic, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, emotional training for Olympic athletes, which that's great. I love that. You know, the will to win, you know, go for the goal. That's great. However, those athletes, they've scared me the most because those are the ones that had, um, a lot of the Olympic athletes had the most scar tissue because they, there's so much pressure to win, but then they're disregarding the, the, the sensation of feeling their body. And so it's like, uh, it's kind of irresponsible. But the thing is that the, they build all this fascia and I'm working. So like, well, we'll get them on the table or something or doing some standing stuff or whatever. And I'll have them just test out the central hamstring, right? Mm. Uh, and then we're talking about fascia here that goes um, up the back of the body, covers the hamstrings. That fascia for the hamstrings goes all the way up the backside. So we're not thinking compartmentalized muscles here. That's more of the fascia. And so like, we'll go on the table and we'll, we'll see if we, the hamstring works at all. And you can tell by like how the leg moves. Sometimes the leg will kick down and it will barely move and it'll feel very empty. Hmm. And that's basically when the fascia is so tight, the brain doesn't even know the hamstring exists anymore. You know, because like the, that has a nervous innervation in that fascia. And so then when you squeeze the towel really hard, you cause this occlusion. It's like step on a cord. Like I step on a cord with my foot, you block the energy. Well, the energy is the communication to tell them that spinal cord and brain uh, via the nervous system that, well, the hamstring exists. But guess what? Whenever that gets blocked off from the fascia being so tense, the brain doesn't, the brain doesn't pick up on that hamstring actually even being there. And so that's where we get the scar tissue. So then like the, there's some other athletes too that will use the spring. So then I'll have them kick down with the hamstring. They'll be either standing or, or, or uh, laying, whatever uh, position they need to do, depending on the athlete. And then when they kick down, then it'll be like acceleration. It's like first gear to like fifth, but there's nothing in between. And then you ask them to go slow and you, you have them go really slow. And I'll use, two, I'll use two fingers. This is like an athlete. He can squat like, you know, 400 pounds. But then I use two fingers and he can barely slowly kick his leg down. This is, I'm a little skeptical now. I'm skeptical whether he's using muscle or if he's just, you know, wrangling up fascia every time and just creating more tension and more tension and more tension. So understanding athletes need to understand how to connect to their actual body, their fascia and their muscles. Mm. Yes, this is huge. And so the, I like hockey, you know, it's been my life. And there's a, a, a few new talents in hockey. And these players are, they're, they're at a, a level that all the other players are not even close to. And you're probably like, well, why? And the reason is, is that they are in touch with their bodies in a way that the other players aren't. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm talking about having the fascia being open. You know, you open the fascia, it'll expand like a balloon, right? And then the muscles can have all those contractile components, you know? Then all the balance, all the different uh, balancing muscle groups can shorten and lengthen, which gives you efficient movement. And so like, uh, I was talking about Connor McDavid, because I, I think he's incredible. He plays for the Oilers. He's, you know, an up and coming guy. The, some of the movements he does, people are like, this he's unreal. Like the turns and the speed he has and, and the way that he can turn on a dime. It's because he has this awareness of his joints, of his tendons and his fascia. Even if it's, if it's conscious or unconscious, he's been made aware of it somehow. So you're, you're kind mm. of, tell me, tell me this is right, because what mm. I hear is that we typically think in athletic performance, right? We mm. think about the mind and the body. Right. And, and typically when we think mind, we think that we talked about already, willpower, right? Mm. Okay, mind over matter. Let right. me just, let me, you know, let me grind through and push my body. Mm. What it sounds like you're saying is that, no, really what, what we need to, to understand and be consciously aware of is not just getting our body to do something, but mm. the feedback that our body is giving us. Right. Yes, that's, that's, the, that's huge, the feedback. And the thing is though, some people get feedback and some people aren't. Hmm. And so this is, a, uh, this is a, a very good question. So an athlete um, might feel pain in an area of their body, right? Could be in the shoulder or whatever. And a lot of athletes fixate on the pain and, and they have this uh, approach of being, well, there's something wrong, I need to fix it. Hmm. This is like, this approach is not productive, okay? Um, psychologically, emotionally, physically, just doesn't, whatever, energetically, it doesn't work. But in Eastern culture, they view it as like, well, the pain is, a, is an echo of communication. Hmm. 
And it's the fascia is what's get, it has that sensation. And it could be an organ trying to say like, oh, I need more blood flow or energy. Or it could be like, uh, you know, whatever, like just dense tissue that needs to be open. You know? So pain is a beacon, yes. but not necessarily the thing. No, pain mm -hmm. is not like, we view pain as being a bad thing all mm -hmm. the time. It's actually a communication which will turn into a sensation, which then eventually will turn into information. Yeah, yeah. And then we get understanding, right? Yeah. This is the next part when I talk about the fascia and the memory, right? So people are like, well, I don't know why my shoulder hurts. And then, the, and then later we figure out it has to do with the right ankle, uh, mm -hmm. the left shoulder, because the fascia connects everything. Everything is connected. And so like all because you feel it in your shoulder, you know, it doesn't mean it's there. That's just an echo. Whereas most, mm -hmm. most of us would think treatment on the shoulder, treatment right. on the shoulder, treatment on the shoulder, right. get my shoulder healthy, mm -hmm. which is just going to create more asymmetry in my body. Right. Yes, th this is why athletes get sidelined or they have their sophomore slumps or they maybe they just totally bow out of the sport in, in general is because they don't have this understanding. And that's because we're taught the body um, by coaches, uh, teachers, whatever, it's superficial understanding. So then we have, it's like reactive. We don't, we're not able to have patience and be like, okay, let's pain. Now, okay, now it turns into a sensation or, oh, now I feel my pec muscle. Hmm. But then that's what I do. I introduce uh, athletes back to their bodies and then they feel like their pec and their rear deltoid. And they're like, wait a second, I haven't been using these and I play tennis and I play college tennis. And I'm like, and they're like, there's a huge epiphany it happens because athletes are very intelligent, you know? Uh, movement patterns athletes make are super intricate. Mm -hmm. However, how are we making them? But once the athlete figures out the fascia to muscle story, like the epiphany is huge. And so this, and this will now turn into efficient movement with open joints and blood flow and energy where the movements come to you mm -hmm. and you don't have to try to make them. Does that, uh, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, explosion mm -hmm. of awareness, right? Mm -hmm. Does that allow us to get into those states of performance that athletes, you know, whether it's recreational or professional levels, mm -hmm. know of as being in the zone? The zone. Being yeah. in flow. Is that what we're talking about? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, so it's crazy. Uh, I mean, I've worked with uh, a lot of uh, yoga instructors too and spiritual uh, energy healers and everything and, and obviously athletes. But like everyone's chasing um, the zone, like this effortless, calm existence of receiving life, okay? Every damn meme I see on Instagram, everyone's talking about it, but no one's telling me how to do it. How do I do this physically? You know, I can do my mantra. I can like say these words. You can do tapping and all of these things. They move energy. However, how am I gonna like open up this like, you know, 8,000 pounds, you know, in my body that I'm not even aware of because I don't even feel it. You know, like it, it kind of blows my mind to say the truth. Um, it's just like, you know, how, how are we able to, to introduce people to this, you know? Is that what sport does? Yes. Um, it, can, it introduces the body, but then it also can do the opposite. You know, like eventually, so as the athletes go on, like the younger athlete, he's like, okay, so, oh my gosh, he's 21, he's in his prime. He goes to 27, now he's over the hill. Mm -hmm. Like in the way we look at athletics, you know, I'm just, this is more of hockey, how they perceive it. But this, like, this is not true in the East. In the East, it's that old wise man who is doing the daily practice every day. He feels his body. He might do the one thing every day mm -hmm. and he masters that one thing and whatever it might be. And then he is like, starts to feel his body in a way that a young talent, say like a young, whatever, it could be a young like football player, or hockey player, whatever it might be, like that number one draft pick, like he feels like that and more, with more information and more wisdom. So there's this, this responsibility you're mm -hmm. talking about, right? Yeah. So as coaches um, or, or athletes in general, when we start performing at a young age, right? When we start really pursuing athletics at a young age, mm -hmm. We, we get into our bodies to start, right? This can be a bridge. Sport is, is beautiful because it can be this bridge into mm -hmm. our body where we never were before. Even, uh, you know, and not even if you're young, if you're you know, an older person who's never really used their body in that way. Right. But it sounds like what you're saying too is the responsibility we need to go into that pursuit with is understanding that if we're not developing a conscious awareness of our true body, the true size and scale and, and energy of it, we're, we're going to end up getting more disconnected from our body after mm -hmm. originally trying to get more connected to it. 
Yes, that is actually a good way of putting it. <laughs> Welcome to the West. Um, no, that, that's what it is. The training can, al- can almost hinder an athlete. And it's a lot of overtraining. I don't really know many athletes that actually have a relaxed nervous system. And so um, for all your trainers and practitioners out there, you, hopefully you know this, um, but now you will, is that if the, the nervous system is in that calm parasympath- parasympathetic state, well, guess what? The body doesn't heal. So I don't care what perfect program you gave them, it's gonna be on hold until we calm that nervous system down. And this will lead back as, uh, back into the zone here. So the zone is like that effortless, calm state. And then the body gets to receive. And so like I'm playing hockey, right? Um, and it's funny, I, I used to always get in the zone and have my best games. I was unstoppable. Um, it was actually one of my games I uh, was playing uh, and it was like uh, regionals and I was like a Bantam uh, age group. And uh, I, I was able to score three goals in 38 seconds. But it's like, I was, it was so calm yeah. and quiet. And it, it was just like, I didn't, there was no thinking. I like, would look in an open space and I'd be like, my body, I'd hear this little internal monologue being like, Scott, just wait. Now move forward to the left. The puck will meet you there, okay? And it was like, whoa, what is this? I didn't know about time. I think I was like, I don't know, 15 or 16 years old. And so this is though, we can actually open this up to everyone, not even, even if you're not an athlete, because like if we can be in this calm, parasympathetic, parasympathetic state, you can live in the zone, which is actually a healthy state of blood flow and also like receiving intuition and instinct. That's one thing we've lost. We've lost the instinctual body and the intuitive body. We're all, we're all stuck in our minds, and that's not even our brain. The mind is like an old tape recorder of mm-hmm. old information of stuff we've already experienced. And so it's like, you know, the old movie. We don't want to play that movie anymore. That, movie's, that movie sucks. So, <laughs> so, like, so the big thing is to be able to calm the nervous system down. The fascia is the key, actually. The tendon and joint attachment and the fascia, you open that up. Now the body believes it's, it's not in the fight or flight state, and now it receives all this information, like tons of information. It could be, you know, people talk about like source, you know, like more of a spiritual context. You know, you receive like, like source or information being like your intuition and your instinct. And that's so much data the body has in it. Like the body is like the greatest library in the world hmm. and no one goes to it. Everyone wants to read a book about how to like to live their life or how to be the best golfer or whatever athlete but they're not even opening up the library here in the fascia. You open that up, now you get information uh, from everything, from all the organs, from the muscles, from the nervous system, that everything works for you. And that's what's incredible is that then the movements come to you. You know, like, and I'm playing hockey and it's like, I don't even think about it. And then my body moves in a way instinctively and and it does it for me. It's like effortless. We've got two more questions, yeah. and there is so much to get to. So yeah. I, I am uh, uh, this is incredible. Uh, yeah. Let's let's start with this last one before before yeah. we dive in here to our last couple. How does an athlete start to cultivate just a deeper sense of awareness with their body? So not the superficial physical form of yeah. I lift the weight; it feels like this. But how do they really start to cultivate that awareness? Well, the the first thing is to be able to calm down the nervous system somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, and most, most athletes don't have a practice of this, you know? Um, what does a practice like, look like? It's pretty simple, actually. Um, and e- the easiest thing is to do, I tell everyone this, even if they're not an athlete, if you put your legs up on a wall and they're above the head, right? That will bring the blood to your stomach, right? And then that will start to calm down the nervous system. But not is it only bring the blood to the stomach. It's also... Uh, opening up the valves for the lymph nodes. So this is huge because like we have toxins, right? And the toxins have to move to the lymph. But if they can't, we can't open up those, uh, those valves that open up the lower lymph to the upper lymph, we're just gonna be hoarding toxins. And so like, this is super easy. You put the legs up on the wall for five minutes, calm down nervous system, you start to move the lymph, and then now, you know, you can excrete it out, you know, uh, through, you know, like, you know, one or number two, you know, whatever it might be. Um, so that's a super simple thing they can do. Second one, this, may, this is not going to be deep fascia, though, but this is super easy, 
is they take a lacrosse ball. I, I do it with all my clients, you know, if, even if they're an Olympic athlete or not. Um, I want them to roll the lacrosse ball on the bottom of their foot, hmm. okay? There's, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's some fascia insertion points there, and there's origin points of, uh, for all the organs. Uh, they call it like, you know, you've heard like acupressure sure. or reflexology. Sure. Well, the thing is that all those most powerful points for the organs are in the foot. <laughs> People would think like, well, isn't the brain point near the head like the strongest? And I say, no, it's that beacon that's way out there in the ocean, the furthest away, mm-hmm. you know, uh, from the shore. Uh, being like the brain, okay? So it's like we light up the, that beacon in the foot. Now we send energy and blood flow up to the organs and the fascia, the superficial, uh, superficial fascia starts to release a little bit mm. and the person starts to feel. And so we want to get people just to feel. That, that spark. Yeah, the spark, the feeling, the sensation. And then, that, then and that's just like, you know, one hologram of the body. There's yeah. tons of holograms that we can upregulate. I call them holograms because there's a, it has all the pressure points to all the organs. And, 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 and it's a convergence of fascia planes. That's so. Upright, I love yeah. that. Okay, uh, bef- before I ask my last question, sure. where can these guys find you online if they want to reach out and learn more? Um, the, the, uh, the website uh, right now is uh, aspireflex.life mm-hmm. um, is the website. And um, you know, I work with everything from amateur to college, professional uh, athletes. And then I also work with other clients too that are in like, accidents, uh, near-death experiences. Uh, I even work with like uh, what they call uh, hopeless cases in Western medicine from MS to Parkinson's to uh, stroke to uh, joint replacements, you name it, the craziest of the crazy. But if you open up the, the structural integrity and the body gets blood flow and energy, it heals itself. It's very, very, very simple. The organs heal themselves, the body heals itself, but we just need that help. It's crazy. So. Okay, so for my last question, mm-hmm. uh, this, this shows omni-athlete, right? Mm-hmm. The idea being that we want to understand what it means to perform utilizing the mind, the body, and mm-hmm. the spirit. So to you, what does it mean to be an omni-athlete? Oh, man. Uh, like a million things just showed up. <laughs> um, an omni-athlete. Well, for me, it's, it's a constant learning it's like you're always going to be that diligent student. But for me, though, it's always pushing the envelope to see what's possible with the human potential. And athletics is the, one of the greatest arenas ever to do it in because our bodies, we become superheroes when we can un- unlock you know, our potential within that calm, effortless state in the zone and the opening up the fascia and energy. There's amazing things that can happen, you know? And it's like chi happens, energy. And this energy is more powerful than like any, like any of our physical body or muscle could ever com- you know, comprehend. You know, or like Bruce Lee does like the two inch punch, knocks over 10 guys. He's using energy, but then it's because the fascia is expanding and then energy will run through there. And it runs through the bones and the bone marrow and it, it's like liquid starts moving, you know, like everything, it's kind of wild. But like, I want that, I always want that. Like, it's weird, I always want just like, learn more and just keep seeing what is possible because we really don't know what's possible. Like really, really don't. And so like with the Eastern philosophies and the, the education and learning of the fascia and the hands-on working with hundreds and hundreds of clients, it's like every, every new day, every new client, I learn something new and it validates what I know is possible. And so that's the omni-athlete for me is like, every day evolving and feeling and like learning and it's like an everyday practice and, and it's always going to be different yeah constantly learning yeah constantly learning thanks for being on the show scott this has been absolutely incredible and uh, uh guys if you uh dive into scott's world get go online check him out understand what he's talking about and really take the time to 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 understand more about what our fascia is our what our body truly can do. Uh, if there's one thing you should be prepared for when you get into his world, especially as an omni-athlete, be ready to, to recognize how much it is that we don't know about what we don't know and that human performance is really, especially in the athletic arena, we're just scratching the surface. So get in there, enjoy it, and push yourselves. Till next time.